Good day, my dear friends. Welcome back to Radiological Anatomy episodes. Our appointment today with episode number 12 about X-ray rule in diagnosing of the ankle ligamentous injury. Today, my presentation is going to help you to clear a lot of confusion about some definitions like mortis, weeper, plafond, pilon, mesiono. So let us get started. The learning objective from my presentation today have a lot of questions and I am responsible to answer these questions during my presentation today. The first one is, do you examine the ankle joint as a ring? You should examine the ankle joint as a ring to don't miss any ligamentous injury or suspected ligamentous injury by radiological examinations or by radiograph or x-ray. Second question is what is the anatomical position of distal tibiofibular syndesmosis? How can differentiate between normal and suboptimal examinations of mortis position? Number four, what is the tibial plafond, sometimes it's called the pilon, and what is its importance? How to suspect interosseous ligament injury by X-ray? How can diagnose mesionu injury? What is the lateral mirror fracture classifications, which is called Weber classification? Actually, I consider this lesson is the most important one to understand ligamentous injury by X-ray particularly at the ankle region. This diagram is showing the fibula, which is positioned at the lateral side, and tibia, which is positioned in the medial side, and the articulations with the tail or bone, talus. And this is the blue color representing the tarsal bones, and there are long bones in the foot, which is called the metatarsal, and the other peripheral bones is called phalanges. My concentration today, I will pay attention for this region, which is called ankle joint. And I have particular or specific concentrations on the ligamentous injury and how can diagnose it by X-ray through this region. This diagram also showing how the articulating bone as the ankle joint appeared. As we see here, the tibia, which is positioned at the medial side, and the fibula, which is positioned at the lateral side. And both bones are articulating together by fibrous syndesmosis here, which is represented by this blue color, which is called the inferior tibiofibular joint or articulations or syndesmosis. And this one uh, is representing one bone from the tarsal bone, as we see here, this is the tarsal bone, the, which is named talus. And talus is articulating with the tibia, as we see here, and also have relations with the fibula. And this is which is called ankle mortis, anteroposterior ankle mortis, medial and lateral, should be symmetrical distance here which is representing by this red color. However, the tailor and the calcaneus can articulate with the subtalar joint, which appearing as a green color here. And now this is the frontal X-ray examinations of the ankle joint. This side is the uh, mortis positions or anteroposterior positions of the ankle which is good or well positioned. And the other side is suboptimal examinations or poor examinations and they can miss diagnosis, some, diagnosis, some air lesions for, uh, through these positions, which is suboptimal. Why is this one suboptimal and this one is uh, a good position? Uh, because the tailor bone here is separated from the fibula. And this can occur through 
uh, internal rotation so that the fibula does not overlap the talus. However, in this position, the fibula and the talus overlapping and they can miss lesions here. So this is suboptimal mortis AB. However, this is the mortis AB in good uh, positioning or examination. Distal tibiofibular syndesmosis representing fibrous joint held together by ligaments. This ligaments is called the interosseous ligament at the distal relationship between tibia and fibula. So this is mortis, good position because the fibula is not overlapped the talus bone and also this is good position because the fibula is not overlapped the talus bone. Now we can describe the distance here between the talus and fibula, talus and tibia and compare its symmetrically appearance. This is important so that any joint space widening can be demonstrated by this way. In this side, this is normal or symmetrical distance. However, in this side, there are medial collateral ligament injury resulting in widening of the, that side comparing with the fibular or lateral mortis side. So there are medial mortis widening here, which is representing medial collateral ligament injury. And this is a pathological ligamentous injury. There are no bone fracture. However, there are suspected ligamentous injury through the mortis X-ray position can be detected here. As we see here, this is a symmetrical distance of the mortis in the normal situation. Tibial plafond. Actually, this word is a French word and sometimes called tibial pylon. What is the pylon or plafond refers? Refers to the horizontal distal tibial articular surface, which is representing by this white line, the lower articular surface of the tibia, or this red line in this three the volume rendering of the ankle joint. And this is the meaning of plafond <coughs> as a French word. By English is ceiling, ceiling meaning roof, as this region is representing roof of the foot. So this is the typical plafond. Again, this is the mortis position, AP, and the fibula is not overlapping the talus bone, so this is normal mortis position or optimal. Also, this one, the fibula not covering or overlapping the talus, so this is also good positioning X-ray. Where is the interosseous ligament in this X-ray? First of all, you should determine the site of the plafond. This is the tibial plafond, which is the articular surface representing the roof of the foot, articular surface of the tibia. Proximal to the, that plafond, about one centimeter, so this is the plafond, proximal to it, about one centimeter, this is the site of the interosseous ligament. The interosseous ligament is a fibrous ligament between the distal end of the tibia and the fibula and should be appearing like this in normal situations. However, this distance should not exceed more than 6 mm to consider it normal. If we look at the other image here, we can see the distance between the tibia and the fibula, which appearing more than 6 mm, and this one representing rupture of the interosseous ligament. So we can suspect or diagnose rupture interosseous ligament by X-ray through these rules. Sometimes it's called syndesmosis widening, which is representing rupture of interosseous ligament. This is abnormal image, 
However, this side is normal mortis image. The interosseous ligament may be assessed by ensuring that at approximately one centimeter proximal to the tibial plafond, as we see in the previous slide, the distance between the tibia and fibula is not greater than 6 mm. If greater than 6 mm, a rupture should be suspected of the interosseous ligament. <coughs> and now with another item, which is called mesonu injury. And I think from the announcing of the word here, it may be also French word. However, in radiology, if there are, from radiological considerations, if there are a valgian fracture of the medial malleolus, as we see here in the frontal radiograph, you should complete examinations of the ring proximally to exclude or confirm, as these situations confirming fractures of the proximal fibula. And also, there are widening more than 6 mm between the distal tibia and the fibula, which are representing also interosseous ligament injury. This component is the mesionu injury representation. And now, another item also should be considered. If we have isolated fracture like these fractures as the distal fibula, and is identified on the anteroposterior view, you should search for further fracture of the posterior malleolus. This is the fractures of the lateral malleolus in the AB view. You should search for another further fractures of the posterior malleolus, which may be superimposed on that view over the fibular fracture. So fracture of the lateral malleolus you should complete examinations to rule out or confirm diagnosis of this posterior malleolar fracture as the ring examination of the ankle joint. This is another example for the ring fracture of the distal end of the fibula and this fracture superimposed another fracture of the tibia as we see here in the lateral view, you can discriminate this fracture, which is called the posterior malleolar fracture of the tibia. This is the ring examination of the ankle joint. You should complete the ring to rule out another fractures. And now, what is the Weber classifications of the lateral malleolar fractures? According to the site of the lateral malleolar fracture, we can classify it APC Weber fracture. Lateral malleolar fractures below the level of the syndesmosis is considered A. At the level of the syndesmosis and running proximally, even if running proximally, is called B Weber classification. However, if the lateral malleolar fracture is originating proximal to the joint, so this is the C subclassifications. The lateral malleolar fractures, as I described in the previous slides, sometimes associated with fractures at the medial or posterior malleolus show of the tibia. So you should scrutinize these regions closely to exclude missing these fractures. And now let me summarize my presentation. You should examine the ankle joint as a ring to avoid missing fractures or missing suspected ligamentous injury. And how can you examine this ankle joint as a ring? First step, mortis AB should be optimized image, not suboptimal, as I describe in detail through presentation, for medial or lateral collateral ligaments rupture suspected if there are asymmetrical distance. Second, you should look at the distal tibiofibular syndesmosis proximal to the plafond one centimeter. And this distance between the distal tibia and the fibula should not more exceed than 
6 mm if exceeding it diagnosing the interosseous ligaments injury or rupture. Third, fracture medial malleolus if detected, you should complete or scrutinize another fracture at the proximal fibula to confirm diagnosis of mesuno injury. And the last note when examining the anchor ring, if there are fracture of the lateral malleolus, you should scrutinize another fracture at the posterior malleolus of the tibia, which can be missed. I hope I don't waste your time and provide you with a little bit valuable information about ligamentous injury by X-ray. You can also follow me and watch more than 60 presentations on my channels, Easy and Different Radiology, searching in Google search. You can also follow me in my YouTube channels every Wednesday for MRI learning lesson every Sunday for rapid review anatomy and every Friday for mnemonic word. Thank you very much for your watching and listening and have a nice day.